In late April, Madagascar announced a herbal remedy for COVID-19 in the form of a drink, attracting both praise and criticism at the same time. And even though the jury is still out on the efficacy of this drink, nevertheless, here in Kenya, at the Kemri headquarters, scientists are also working on various herbal remedies. This is what we found out. Dr. Festus Tolo is the Chief Research Scientist and Deputy Director at the Natural Products Research and Drug Development Program at Kemri. At this facility, the scientists are currently working on herbal remedies for diseases such as malaria, high blood pressure and HIV AIDS. But our interest today is in a potential remedy for COVID-19. The lead product we are looking at is the one we are referring to as Zedufex. Zedufex. This is a product which we developed, I would say, about seven, six years ago. And uh, we were able to uh, actually establish that it has potent antiviral activity against herpes simplex virus. This virus is the one which causes human herpes. And herpes, if you might know, is a very serious opportunistic infection in immunocompromised persons, especially if you happen to have HIV and AIDS. Although Kemri scientists were hesitant to divulge Zedupex's key ingredient, we established that it is made from the medicinal tree Carissa edulis, a fast-growing shrub or small tree indigenous to parts of East Africa and Asia. The plant is one of the most prevalent traditional cures, and communities harvest roots, barks, and even the fruits to make concoctions for many diseases, including indigestion, high blood pressure, and even toothache. Surprisingly, this plant has also been used for another famous herbal treatment. This Zedupex is from the same plant. Loliendo. The Loliendo product. The same plant? Yes. And... When the Lolulundo was being talked about, already as we had done our full research on this product and we had publications on it, in fact, when the Tanzanians learned that Kemri had done a lot of work on the Lolulundo product, they came for our publications and we shared with them as good neighbors. And they used our publications to, I would say, confirm the activities which they had seen on the Lolulundo product. What we struggled to understand, however, was the correlation between herpes, a common viral disease that causes sores on different parts of the body, and COVID-19, a respiratory viral infection. Well, I would not say there's a direct correlation because uh, the herpes simplex virus is a DNA virus in terms of you know, uh, the configuration of the virus, while the coronavirus is an RNA virus. So that difference means that even their modes of uh, replication is different. So what we want to do is uh, we want just to prepare this product the way uh, we have registered it with the Pharmacy and Poisons Board and subject the coronavirus to it so that we see what happens. Is it going to stop the replication or is it really going to kill the virus? Although the research is still in its infancy, there are a couple of reasons why Zedupex is a front runner in the search for a COVID-19 herbal remedy. So there are millions and millions of compounds in this particular product. And each of these compounds are presenting differently in terms of therapeutic. Uh, some of them could be immuno, uh, improve the immune system of the body. Some of them could be even be nutritional. Uh, we have found that it has some presence of uh, trace element zinc, which is also key. Uh, in the human system. The product has not yet been administered on any coronavirus patient yet. Thus, its efficacy is still unknown. We are now going to introduce the coronavirus and we are going to use a clinical isolate. And maybe to mention, mention this, you know, when you are using a virus isolate, especially for a virus which is new, you must have ethical clearance to use this virus. There is a team, a clinical team, who are working into how we can be able to get that virus. As I speak now, they have gone through uh, certain stages which are necessary in terms of clearance, and they are at a final stage where they are going to get that ethical clearance, and then we can now be able to use this virus in our experimentation. So once we get this virus, 
Uh, within, I would say, a period of one month, we will, we will have been able to look at our herbal product at different concentrations and know whether the product has anti-coronavirus activity. The good thing with herbal products is that their evaluation is not as thorough as conventional medicine. There are certain things which, once you present, uh, it is taken that the product is okay and it can move to the next level. Madagascar were the first African country to publicly announce a herbal remedy for COVID-19, known as COVID Organics, which it claimed has curative and preventive properties. Made from Artemisia, an anti-malarial plant that grows on the island, it has been freely distributed in schools and public venues with a number of African countries, including Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of Congo, also making their orders. But the World Health Organization has cautioned against its use and other unproven herbal drugs. I, I don't want to think that this is a product which was just brought on the table, maybe taken to the president, and the president just you know, started saying this is a good thing. My assumption is that before it was presented to the authorities, it, has, it must have gone through some stages of processing and evaluation. So I would like to assume that this product has a known safety profile, because that is very key. I would also like to assume that it has some known antiviral activity. So could this powder provide therapeutic relief for those suffering from COVID-19? Well, medical experts opine that the key challenges include standardizing of herbal medicine, bearing in mind there are varied levels of components, and also mass production, which sometimes can be a challenge if the right active ingredients aren't always available. But another major obstacle that lies in the path of herbal medicines that never reach their full potential is how to turn good research into a finished and profitable product. We don't fund them enough to go beyond the research. Like this year, I think Camry has got something like 2.5 billion. Whereas, say, uh, Kenyatta probably has got something like 17 billion. Now, if you do that comparison, then you find that a lot of our money is going into consumption or service delivery other than supporting research. The researchers do their work, they have their findings, and the findings should get themselves into our shelves through manufacturing. There is a gap between the knowledge that is there, yes. what has been researched and found to work, and putting that uh, into use through manufacturing. Medical experts opine that previous herbal innovations have made for easy pickings for foreign funders who swoop in, take the research, and quickly develop consumer solutions for profit in other laboratories. We, we don't have that sense of agency, and it goes to a large extent in funding. Uh, because if, the, if we fund them adequately, and then they are given the task, we are giving you this money, we want the result in, in such and such a time, then actually it, 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 it will work. Camry should be able to actually produce these things we are using for testing. Even uh, those uh, sticks that you see are being used, even the media that you carry the, 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 the specimen in, the camera should be able to actually produce them working with the industry somewhere. Thus, as the world scrambles for remedies to COVID-19, Kenyan scientists are working on a local solution that could yield international recognition, but only if they get the right support. Reporting for Citizen TV, I'm Waihiga Mwaura.